we will move rapidly through our agenda this evening because everybody has plans to uh, fulfill, I'm sure, between now and the weekend. So with that being said, uh, I would ask if you would please now join us, stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, after which Council Pool will offer an invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us bow our heads. Merciful and our wise and everlasting God, we want to thank you for another privilege to come together as a board, as a councilman of this town. Show us the way, Lord, that we can be successful in our endeavor. No, Father God, we ask that you will bless each councilman. Bless the mayor. Bless Anna Marie. Lord, uh, bless us that we do the right thing for the people, not for ourselves, but for the people of this town, that we may grow and be prosperous. And the Lord, we ask that you will bless us through this storm. You have brought us from a mighty long ways, but we depend on you. We know your will will be done, and we thank you, and we ask these blessings in the name of our Father and Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. <coughs> I see the cons consent agenda has returned. Yes, right? I'm happy huh? about that. <laughs> Caught my eye. Uh, next item is the consent agenda. If you would take a look at those three items. And uh, Chair would entertain a motion that we approve it as presented. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on Anyone or all of them? Okay, hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Any opposed, no? All right, that motion carries. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Tonight we're going to hear uh, a presentation from North Carolina Park of Transportation uh, concerning what uh, is, is known in uh, that world as a road diet plan, uh, as it would be applied to North Broad Street. And we have Brooks Braswell and Gretchen Byron with us tonight. And I'm sorry, sir, I didn't get your name. Barry Hobbs. Barry Hobbs. Nice to have you. Look forward to what you're going to share with us. Mayor, Councilman, thank you for allowing us to be here. And a special thanks to Miss uh, Anne Marie for helping us uh, get this added to the agenda tonight. Uh, but I'm here to present um, a road diet project that has been uh, included in our STIP uh, for Broad Street uh, and the TIP number is EV5906 and uh, my name is Brooks Brazel. I'm the planning engineer for Division 1. Uh, part of my job is to, to help get the, the projects planned and funded. Uh, so before we go much further with this project though, we'd like to present it to you and at, at the end of this, um, what we would actually have need from you uh, from the town would be uh, a resolution of support. Uh, but before we uh, get to, to that point, I'd like to present uh, elements of the project that we would like to incorporate uh, within this road diet uh, project and uh, get your feedback and get your input uh, before we move forward with the project. So, but if you would, uh, these are the uh, items of discussion, um, current staff introductions, uh, strategic prioritization and our state transportation improvement plan which is uh, how this project uh, came about uh, existing conditions proposed improvements in our next steps uh, but currently right now our division one board of transportation member is Alan Moran uh, and our division one staff uh, is Jerry Jennings he's division engineer uh, Gretchen Byron who's here with us tonight is, a, is our division project development engineer Myself, Brooks Brazel, Division Planning Engineer, and also uh, we sent this out before uh, Barry Hobbs. I realized Mr. Hobbs was going to be with us tonight, uh, but he is our Senior Project uh, Engineer for the Division. Okay. Uh, the project came about by, uh, there was a committee uh, put together uh, a few years back. It was the Albemarle Regional Bicycle Committee, uh, and they developed the bicycle plan for the region. 
north of Albemarle Sound and south of Albemarle Sound. And with that, they uh, identified areas where the bicycle sorry, routes uh, were somewhat lacking and needed improvement. Um, and from that, they developed a plan across the region to upgrade the facilities uh, for our uh, for our bicycle folks that, that actually uh, utilize our bicycle routes. Uh, and with that, uh, the, plan, the plan was made and, and approved and adopted. Uh, and from that, our RPO, our local RPO, uh, carved out projects out of the plan, out of the bicycle plan. I presented those as projects to be scored and, and graded and included in the prioritization process. And with that, the Broad Street, uh, the project was presented, uh, it was graded, and it was found that it was a viable project. It received the points. Uh, and with that, it was um, uh, included in our 2017 to 2027 STIP plan. And with that, uh, the funding uh, that was uh, associated with that project is called TAP funding, which is a transportation alternative uh, funding source. But with the strategic prioritization process, uh, projects are submitted through the Rural Planning Organization, which is our local Iowa RPO. Uh, the Department of Transportation uses a transparent, systematic, and data-driven process for prioritizing the major transportation in North Carolina and making investment decisions. And with that, that, with that process, this Broad Street project was, was graded and scored. Uh, and with that, uh, it was included with our STIB uh, plan. So, and it was, in, sorry, it was included in here. Um, but with that, that TAP funding was associated with this project. But associated with that TAP funding, it's a, it comes from a federal source. And with that federal source, we have to have a local match. Uh, and the, the breakdown is at 80%, 20%, which 20% would be a local match to the 80% federal funding. Uh, and that local match would come from the town. So this is the uh, overall map of the North Ross Street Road Diet Program that stretches from Oakland Street all the way to Water Street. Uh, it was included in our STIP. Uh, it was a let date of fiscal year 2025. Was it any right away to be included because we were planning to stay within uh, our uh, curb and gutter limits? So, and also, it's a historic area. So, we couldn't go outside of our existing right away or our existing footprint. Um, so, the let date for this project would be fiscal year 2025. But I'm going to talk to you about the, uh, the existing conditions and then I would like to talk to you and present the actual proposed conditions that we'd like to build, uh, or what I would suggest that we build. Um, I'm presenting elements of the project that could be included or not included. Everything that I present tonight uh, would be uh, subject to your approval, essentially, because the project is actually the town's project. Uh, and we would incorporate those ideas that, that you all feel like would be appropriate for your community. This existing condition uh, from Oakland Street to Virginia Road is a 36 foot roadway, face to face, curb and go. Uh, and with that, uh, what we could do uh, is what I propose is to create a cross section that mirrors this, which would be essentially uh, five foot bike lanes on either side with two through lanes for your uh, automobile track. Uh, the lanes it would break down to around or about uh, two 12-foot travel lanes with two five-foot uh, bike lanes on either side of the roadway. Although, um, in this area, I think you guys do have on-street parking. That may present a challenge, and I'm not sure if the town would like to eliminate that on-street parking. Although, um, it's kind of limited when uh, someone is parked in that little section. It uh, doesn't leave a lot of travel way there left vehicles to pass that part, vehicle next to the curb. But this is the proposed cross-section that, that we feel like would work. Um, with that, we could utilize uh, what's called buffer bike lane on either side of the roadway. And this condition uh, here in the bottom right-hand corner would be close to what 
we probably be left uh, if we were to do the road diet in, in that section of road from Oakland Street to Virginia Road. Or Virginia Road, sorry. Any questions? Okay, <laughs> go ahead. How far out does it go on North Broad? On North Broad? Yeah. Uh, as far, it goes as far out. Or, this project is the, the project description goes to Open Street. Okay, because there, there was a section beyond Open Street there that we've had on our radar for quite some time for just pedestrian upgrade, curve, gutter. It's just gravel and a curve. And uh, was, that's why I want to know if it went past Open because Currently, currently the way that it's written is still, but it's not. However, I feel like if we possibly could amend the project description um, if you felt like you would like to include that within the, within the project. Yes, sir? Yeah. Most of these streets is so narrow. I can't see how you could take how many feet for a bicycle on both sides of the street and then have enough room in the middle for a big truck. And, and where, where are the people going to park at? A lot of folks parked on this street. Right, and that's, that's why I, I said that um, through that section there in, um, from Oakland Street to Virginia Road, there is on street parking, but that would be the town's decision. To, and if, if we were to do the bike lanes, um, we would have to eliminate that on street parking through that section. Now, as far as the truck traffic, 12-foot uh, lanes or 13-foot lanes would be more than sufficient to handle uh, any truck traffic that would be traveling through that section of uh, Broad Street. You can do all this without widening the street? Yes, sir. What is it, 11 feet? What one lane, 11 feet, another lane, 11 feet? Well, this section is 36 foot okay. face to face as far as your, your curving go. This is. Uh, is a general description of what we would have, but actually what you would be left with would be two 12-foot travel lanes and two 5-foot bike lanes with a what's called a, a, a buffered area, uh, which is 12 inches wide, so you take up the other two feet. So that would be 36-foot uh, face to face. Yes, sir. And, and how much, statistically, these things really make the roads safer for not only people in cars and make them safe for people, pedestrians and bikes. Correct, yes. Um, and that would be part of that design study that we'll kind of get to at the end. Uh, but definitely what you would essentially have is sort of a calming effect to your the traveling public for your automobiles and your truck traffic. It kind of have a calming effect because they wouldn't have, they'd kind of be not boxed in, but it, uh, they would be kind of limited in the roadway as far as why the road is generally faster for people travel. So this would somewhat limit that and kind of have a common effect on your automobile track and provide for your bicycle track. And if we extended it out where there are no sidewalks or anything, it would give pedestrians a way to walk from town to like the family dollar or the, yes. you know, the um, I don't want to say the ABC I know, store. Mama, <laughs> Mama Cedars. Mama and places like that. CBS. Yeah, and CVS. And it wouldn't be just a, a short ways further to actually get right. to, to that. Uh, and even if we had to uh, look at that in the future as, a, as an addition to this project, we may have to entertain, entertain that at a later date. But it is a, would be a viable addition to the project. Brokers. Yes. Does your bike lane have to be five foot wide? I mean, excuse me, four foot wide or five foot wide? In this case, next, in next to the curve, what, what we would actually have to have is five foot from the face of the curve. Two foot of it would actually be curving gutter and three foot foot of it would actually be asphalt. And that's to provide enough space there for the bike to travel and stay off of that curve. Uh, then the other foot would actually be the foot of buffered bike lane there uh, to give that kind of buffered space between your, your automobile traffic and your bicycle traffic. I was just looking at a way to see if there was a way we could stretch the, the traffic lanes out from 11 yeah, we, foot well, to What we could do at 12, well, what we'd actually be left with Currently, it would be 12 foot travel lanes. If we did away with the buffered bike lane and just did a single stripe, and you'd have 13 foot travel lanes. So, is this plan with the future of people driving these uh, 
there's a go kart or whatever oh, the place. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that this incorporates the, um, that that kind of travel on my roadway, but uh, I guess I know there's. I think there's a plan here golf in, cart, you know, for golf carts to travel around the Edenton. I, I don't think that's incorporated in this. Um, although I guess they could possibly. Uh, which you'd have a common effect by by doing this type of work, so it may make it easier for those golf carts to get out on my roadway should they get their license properly. And when you say calming, you just mean it makes people slow down. So these big old trucks don't roll by people's houses and take their windows out. Yeah. But currently, I think the vast majority of this project is primary roadway. Okay. So, therefore, uh, I can't take that truck designation away, uh, being it's the primary route. But we can do what we can to uh, maybe calm the traffic as much as possible. Or, maybe if we do this type of work, it may push more of the truck out of town unless they actually have to come to the downtown. My question, what we can do about the people that park on that street? We've got well, a lot of people that park in front of their houses on that street. And there's a couple of businesses on that street that they park. Like the light, like where you get your license and all that stuff at. We just gonna cut them out? Um, yeah, you are correct. That would eliminate the non street parking. But best I could tell, uh, all of the, the houses and businesses, I think, have off street parking. So they, they do have their own parking available if you were to eliminate uh, the on street parking. You might want to have to improve it a little bit, but they do have on street parking. But, I mean, off street parking. But. At the driving bureau? License Bureau, they do have off tree. I'm not sure exactly who owns it, but there's parking there around that building in that general vicinity, best I could tell. Do you have other municipalities that you've done the road diet to? That I don't have a list of them with me. I can we could, um, so I can do some, do some research to find out okay. uh, exactly where we may have done these types of projects for you, if you'd like to see. From existing conditions for Virginia Road to Church Street, it's variable. Uh, there in front of the school, high school, I believe it is, uh, there's 42 foot of roadway width. Uh, then when you, once you get past that school, it winds out to 48 foot of road, roadway width. Um, currently, the existing conditions are four uh, full travel lanes. Uh, they're uh, close to 12 foot wide, essentially. Um, depending on where you're at there, or, or just slightly less than uh, 12 foot wide. This is the current, or uh, the proposed layout that, that we are entertaining. We'd have two travel, travel lanes with one center turn lane, and then have a five foot bike lane on the other side of the roadway. And that, the current layout will leave you with uh, roughly 12 foot travel lanes, and five foot bike lane on either side. And also a 12 foot um, center turn lane. Would you have any vegetative median, medians? Uh, that, that would kind of be up to the town exactly what they would like to see. Uh, granted, the rendering here does include um, vegetative median or what's actually termed as a um, pedestrian island. Uh, and what that would be there is. Um, Mid-block crossing, pedestrian crossing. I'll, I'll show you another slide in just a second. That has this, a common effect is, too. Yeah, that has a common effect. Uh, lots of, and depending on what the uh, town would like, how they would like to see those um, pedestrian islands look, they could improve them with landscaping if they so chose. Uh, granted, I wouldn't suggest uh, an entire corridor have a landscape medium. These uh, small pedestrian islands, if we located them in the right position, in the right place, and didn't block any driveways, it wouldn't limit uh, the mobility or access to anyone's property or limit your mobility for your EMS or, or your emergency management services. Um, what I'm going to show you next is actually North Broad Street in Newman, where they essentially did that landscape meeting. 
throughout the, their corridor on Broad Street. What that does do is limit all of your travel to right in and right out. Here in downtown Eaton, that would force all of your traffic to do right in, right out, and circle your block to be able to come back to the same point that they were at. Well, that's exactly what we've done downtown. You can't turn across the lanes to park. I mean, you can't. You, you know, now it's illegal to take a left. You know, to take left. a left hand across the street. I mean, I know the whole council's been. You know, there's been a lot of talk about that. And I think this would really improve the value of that street and make it a boulevard. I mean, you got to have some turn lanes at the end, at the yeah, ends have, of the block. I mean, each block I think needs a turn lane. But I mean, I think that would certainly increase the value of property down there and make it a boulevard. And, and Newburn's progressive, and I think that that's right. and and they did like include uh, bike lanes and parking. Yeah. Which this corridor was, uh, had sufficient right away to to handle that that type of setup. They've got a bike lane on that. Yes, sir. It's in between. It's in between your parking space and this edge line. And how wide mm -hmm. is that? That one there is three or four foot wide. Best I can recall from when I went. Actually, uh, I had a class there in one of those buildings and uh, saw, saw the setup, and I said that would be a great place to, uh, to demonstrate. What you could do as an option, um, however, I would probably suggest your, your um, pedestrian islands with mid-block pedestrian crossings. That way it wouldn't limit anybody's movement and access up and down Broad Street or across Broad Street uh, at any location or limit your EMS services. Uh, when you when you go down Broad Street and you turn going to 32, or vice versa, not so many tractor trailers coming there. They need all of that room to make a turn. I agree with you. I've, I've been been there and have witnessed tractor trailers trying to make that turn, and pretty much everybody has to back up now. Even even if you set this up where the way that we're proposing. It still wouldn't give track trailers enough to make that turn, mm -hmm. no matter even, even as it is existing or how we've got the buses. And if they're traveling through, don't we want to make it as difficult as possible for them to if, just ride through and shake all the windows and all the houses? I mean, it's a it's well, a thoroughfare now, and I think we need to. I mean, I don't know if it's possible to get the trucks off with y'all, but I mean, I, unless they're delivering in town, they don't need to be rolling through here and designated as a primary. I don't believe we can remove the trucks. But can we get it undesignated? Route. How do you get it undesignated? Uh, I, I think it has been done here, but I think it comes reversed very quickly. Okay. Best I can recall. It's been a history about that, yeah. but I can't. Because a lot of them are turning this way and coming out in and getting stuck oh, right here and running in their, <coughs> their benches and everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, but hopefully, if, if word got around and we were to install some of these proposed uh, ideas. Uh, hopefully maybe they would, it would prevent them from coming this way. So, uh, but we can't tell them that they can't. I, I live on Brawl Street and I've kind of discussed this with a lot of neighbors. The only thing that um, people don't like about this whole tree line the whole way down is and you've mentioned it several times, is if, if I'm pulling out of my driveway, there's several reasons, but one, if I'm pulling out of my driveway, I've got to go somewhere down the street and turn right and turn back right and then to get back downtown. That's right. number one. Number two, if the fire truck is leaving the firehouse and has to come downtown, it's got to take some back streets to get to a, a fire. The same way with any house on Broad Street. If they come out, where are they gonna go, or how are they gonna get across that to you know, get back to a house? Because they, they, they can't turn, you can't take a fire truck and do a UE, you know, right. as you're proposing this, I'm sure. Right. Uh, and and I would think it would probably be the same way with, um, with a, a rescue squad. I, I don't know how they could, and, and we know how seconds are there, someone's having a, a heart attack or a stroke. It, I, that's the, that's, that would be my main concern about this. Right, it, with this setup. Yeah. How do, how do you make that happen? Well, with this setup, 
this setup, there's there's no other option other than to go down circle block with this setup. If you did the uh, pedestrian islands, located them in the right spot, um, it shouldn't be an issue. And also, this is essentially forces it into a what's called a super street design. And most of your super street designs have bulb outs so that people can make U-turns. We don't have that option here in downtown. Going to the traffic light at the 3217 intersection, where the fire station and the Walgreens and all about where that is, does this proposal say that that vegetative median goes all the way to the stoplight, or would it stop before it got to the well, fire station? I'm not. I'm not you proposing can... vegetative median. I'm, I just presented it so that we could discuss it. Okay. And, and present it as, okay, this is a topic of discussion for the town. And whatever, whatever but it, it would go to the intersection. We choose, we could choose where it would start and stop. Right. Okay. What about the traffic circle at the end? Down there at that intersection. It, it would, um, the, the, the shell station. station. Would, that would be a part of the study and looking at. Okay. And, and do, do we, I mean, do we like to have a public meeting about this? I mean, is that the way this usually works where, you know, you give it to us tonight and Amory schedules something to get the public in and get their, their thoughts? Well, well, I guess we need to get, that's, that's a couple steps ahead. But actually what we need to do is get the town on board before you can even get to those design options and get it to the point where we can present it as a public information. So we just say we like the theory and then we work right. out all the details whether to have a buffer or what are have little ones, big ones or whatever. Okay. Who pays for this? Sorry. Sorry. Who pays for this? 80, well there's, 80, 80, there's a um, shared cost. Um, DOT is going to resurface the project and strike the project at our cost. The town would be responsible for it. 20% uh, of the design cost and any extras that you may want to add into the project, such as those uh, landscaped pedestrian outlets. The, the town will be responsible for 20% of those costs. Essentially, uh, the federal government would pay the other 8% of those design costs. And what we have estimated is uh, design costs will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 150000 Town's share would be 20% of that 100 feet. Rough guess. So somewhere in the 30 to $40,000 range. So if we decided to put the trees down the middle, we wouldn't have to pay for that item? Yeah, yes. Okay. Of course not. Yes, you'd have to pay. No, I'm saying would we have to pay the 20% or would we have to pay 100% of that? That would be 100%. The town would have to pay 100% of that. proposed layout, and this came straight out of that bicycle plan uh, that I mentioned earlier. This has the reverse parking here in your downtown area. We're not proposing that you, or suggesting that you should do that. What, what does uh, that mean? What is the back end? Yeah, you would have to pull up and back into the parking space so your back bumper would be up against the curb. I, I read an article the other day. That's, that's just about that's that's the, that stops. Right. Our project technically would stop here at Queen Street. But that is becoming a big option in towns now. Is that yes. correct? I mean, I, I read yeah. I mean, the other day where... It just seems bizarre. That way you drive out instead of back out. You're back in? Back in, drive out. But that maneuver may be a little bit easier in parallel parking, but still, you're forcing the vehicles back. Well, you back into it, so you right. drive out. But if, right now, you're going to back out into moving traffic. Mm -hmm. That's right. So either way, you back. Uh, but this this does have uh, the sharrows in this area, and probably may have to do a little bit of extra study on Queen Street and I think Church Street there uh, for your signing and sharrows to ensure that um, bicycle traffic is accountable on your roadways and our roadways.
next steps, back to the funding. Uh, what we would actually need from town is, is a resolution or a show of support by letter uh, so that we can move forward with this project. But with that uh, resolution or show of support, we would also have to uh, uh, enter into a reimbursable agreement between DOT and town uh, to ensure that the town would reimburse that 20% match. <laughs> Uh, should you so choose that you like some of these options or would like to incorporate some of these into the project. Right. Are there any other questions? So, the reimbursable, the last thing, <clears throat> the 20%, um, that would obviously come once we, we have to decide the design plan. Well, to get a cost. What, what we'd have to do is we could is think we, about we'd have to enter into an agreement before we could even start the design work. Okay. I understand that. All right. Good. <coughs> and, then, and then we have citizens, I mean, because I think this is something that citizens to need out. to, well, we've got a long time to do it, too. Well, we have to come up with the, the firm would have to come up with alternative to present so there would be something to show. Okay. Of, you know, right. Some viable alternatives. So there will be a public hearing down the road. For down the road. After the road. Now, what we'll throw out there, though, is uh, if we enter into this reimbursable agreement and we start this design work and we deliver the project, the town would only be responsible for the 20%. If we enter into this agreement, we get to doing the, the design work and the town says, oh, we won't scrap this, we don't want to do it. At that point, then you would be responsible for 100% of whatever design work had been done at that point. Yeah. Isn't is there a way that you could, uh, uh, or the company or whatever, set up a project and do a part and, and so the town can get used to what it's like instead of trying to do all this all over the town? I guess we could limit it to a section that the town has to Right, a section so you can say this is a good thing or it's a bad thing. Uh, um, we, we, could approach it, we could approach it that way. I'm concerned about these streets. Some of the streets you got here, they just ain't wild enough for all of this. If you were to do something like that, though, you don't have, you have to go back through the TIP approval process. That, but this, this number would hold that we have assigned to this project right now until such time as we did all of it. Well, no. well, we could do part of it. And, or does that have, is there a it's, conclusion whatever date? Whatever you decide, whatever is decided to pursue, that is this project. And right. once that's complete, it's not going to sit there and wait. Okay. Um, the money goes on into something else. It has okay. to be pretty right. Now, the later on, if you, if you wanted to do additional work, then we could present that through the RPO. Uh, and, and present that project through the prioritization process and that project through RTIP. And that can be pretty timely, can it not? Consuming. It, it, it can, um, depending on what funding um, and how, how the project was scored yeah. at that time. But it, would, would it add any uh, uh, leverage to the I mean, would the fact that we had done something already enhance that process if we wanted to do it? Potentially. Brooks, um, would it be possible for us to get or for you to provide some sort of cost estimates of what the pedestrian landscaped island crossings would cost and then an estimate of what a boulevard would cost, you know, with Yes, I can, I can, I'll do my best to um, take I, note of that and I, see if we can come up with a cost estimate for that type of work. Because I think that would help the council make a decision about, you know, wanting to commit to the um, reimbursable agreement. I wish we, we could throw out the idea, too. It's not required that you have any islands, period. 
no landscape islands, no pedestrian island, no mid block crossings. Okay. Uh, but just like, have a turn lane from one end Like Councilman Big said, it would be 100% our cost. Yes, it would, mm -hmm. regardless of which, whichever you chose, unless we just did a turn lane down, down okay. the center. And then it would just I, be I don't want 20 a, Yeah, but I don't want a bunch of turns, arrows going all the way down our broad street. It looks a little worse than it looks now. I mean, I'd rather not do it at all. That's what we're, where we're heading. I mean, okay. I think we need those two cost estimates. And, yeah. you know, I mean, those, we've, got a, we've got one of those lanes going out this side of town and people just park some great big trucks in the middle of it in front of Westover and get out of the get out of the truck and go eat lunch and go get back in. That's how much they're used. Is that the turn lane? Yeah. yeah. They just use the yes. turn lane I've to park Mack trucks in. <laughs> <laughs> just go around. Alright well that's all I have for the presentation. Um, is there any other questions? Uh, I'll be glad to try to field them or you can um, more than welcome to contact me at the division office, and we'll do our best to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thank you. As well. We look forward to uh, moving this project down the road. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Now, I would say um, not, not to push you towards a deadline, but uh, we do have a problem. The division needs category will be scored over the next month or two, which this project is in the division needs scores. Um, if, if the town does not support it, then at that point, we, DOT probably would not assign points to the project and just go ahead and pursue research. What time frame do we have? Uh, I want to say it was October. Yeah, October. October, yeah. by the end of October, I think we need to, we would like to know. If not, if we do not have a resolution by that point, we may elect to just kind of defer the project to a later date on our part, part within our point assignment. So. But I guess you need from us to estimate, so y'all yeah. can Yeah, we'll, we'll get that to you we'll as quickly as we can. Great. Yep. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you all Thank very you. much. Thanks, Brooke. Okay, we've reached the point where we'll we're here from our committees having met prior to this meeting, and we'll hear first from Councilman Stallings, please, sir. Thank you, Mayor. We only have one item on the agenda tonight, and it is recommended that Council lower a speed limit to 25 miles per hour near the curb at South Oakham Street and East Water Street and near the curb on South Granville Street and West Water Street. And I will put that in the form of a motion. I second that, Mayor. Motion and a second to make those speed limit changes as described. Any questions or comments? Just there is a uh, 10 mile an hour speed sign at, on South Granville right before you make that curve. There is one there already. Yeah, but there's not one coming. There's not one Water coming Street. toward it uh, yeah. on Water Street. There's one going right. away from Water yeah. Street, but right. there's not one coming in the other direction. Right. <clears throat> I don't see how you can make that turn not going much faster than 10 mile an hour. So, yeah, but so but I bet people they do. do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 they have said they come by his house tonight. We have a motion on the floor. Yes, we do. Any further <coughs> questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed, no? All right. Maybe you didn't oppose that. <laughs> Bring it on. In both directions. Mayor, that's all we have tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we'll hear from finance, chaired by Councilman Dixon, please. We have one thing on. It's re recommended that we approve the financing agreement with Southern Bank for the new street sweeper which is already sweeping the street looks great <laughs> we, we rented a unit okay that's not the one we're going to have <laughs> Corey, is that the one that we have maybe maybe not yeah it looks great though it, it, it really can get in and out of everything it's real so, quiet yeah so i'll put that in the form of motion and no dust either it doesn't it's not like that other one Second. and it looks more like a street sweeper yeah yeah well do we get a second yes okay any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. All right, thank you very much. We're now at new business, and Anne Marie, if you would handle those items for us, please, ma'am. Yes, sir. I'm happy to um, present to you and introduce and welcome Michael Reardon and his um, assistant, Hannah, are here tonight. We've been working with um, 
Michael and his team for the last several months on an application for funding. Um, their company is eligible to apply for the building reuse grant for expansion. And um, as the council knows, um, we submitted an application because um, the team in Raleigh that vets projects that are eligible um, to apply for these grants vetted all of um, Daedalus's, um, their business plan, their financials, um, what the proposed expansion would entail, and the team recommended that um, the company be allowed to apply for this grant. So we had a quick turnaround. We had to submit the application. It, we found out like on a Tuesday that um, we were approved to apply, but the grant application was due on Thursday. So um, anyway, we, we, we got it together. It's, I think it's a really good application, but we did um, inform Commerce that you all would have to officially um, adopt the resolution authorizing the application to be submitted. Daedalus is proposing um, to create 65 new jobs. They've already, um, their baseline job number when we started was 17. They had 17 jobs, but I think they were up to 26. Two more today, yeah. Okay, 28. Um, so yeah. that's, that's terrific. And they're making a huge investment. Um, so I asked Michael and Hannah to come tonight and to give you a brief overview of their company and of the, the project. So, Michael, welcome. Thank you very much for your time tonight. I, I'll go very quickly as everyone wants to get home for the, the hurricanes and what have you. Thank you for your time. So basically I'm asking, as Anne Marie said, asking for the city's support of our application for the uh, building reuse grant. Okay. You got it. The, the, the write up we've given to the state. Sure, uh, we're spending on the stage one, uh, stage one refurbishment and expansion, uh, 1.6 million. And of that, the, the state is offering half a million in matching funds. So we have to spend to, to get, and, and again, we're asking the city support of this grant. Uh, the, the big, we build in carbon fiber, so it's very high tech, and we we are not like any of the other boat builders that you may have been used to over the years. We try to keep the factory at a hospital level. The dust is horrible for our, our process, and temperature and humidity, we try to control it. So for the next couple of builds that we have, we, we need to basically do a, a climate and humidity controlled room to do our, our work. And that's the majority of the grant. We're putting a mezzanine floor in, we're blowing some walls out and putting some very big doors in, and that's the, the result of, of our spend there. There's the, the factory existing at the moment. It's the old Carolina Classic building. So this north view here, we're going to put a 50-foot door in, concrete pad and expand. Uh, stage 2 expansion, which scheduled for uh, 12 months further on, is to add another several hundred feet of length, so another 40,000 square feet of building, if, if our plan keeps working. But so far, so good. On the east bay, again, we need to blow that door out and, and put a 60-foot door in to get, to get the boats out. The boats, the first ones coming out are 80 feet long and 40 feet wide. Inside again, then, there's a north-south section and an east-west section, uh, so that, that wall will come out. You can see the floor, uh, when we took over the building, it had five or six inches of chopper gun hell, we call it, and a chop strand fiberglass. And the walls were the best looking part of the building, and now the, now the walls don't look so good. <laughs> Uh, we're putting a mezzanine above uh, with more offices. 
in this section. And the whole, pretty much the whole end of that building from where you see the light coming from the door, uh, it's 110 feet long. That's our, our climate control zone. It's in a small image of it on the, on the right hand side there. So, yeah, it's okay. Keep going. Again, this is how the boats will move, move through the, the building. Now we're putting a second mezzanine on the south end. Team, part of the team so far with the, the beginnings of of, uh, of our first unit. That's what she'll look like when she's finished. Actually, the window is a little different. Uh, we've acquired the, some of the assets of Gunboat, which was the, one of the reasons I came to the Outer Banks as a boat builder in Wanchis that, that went to bankruptcy, and the assets were purchased by a French company who promised the court of North Carolina they'd keep everybody here, and then immediately took it all to France. Uh, after three years of lawsuit, we've managed to recover the assets, which were pre previously known as G4. I was on the design team for this boat. We won European Boat of the Year and US Boat of the Year in the same year, which is kind of like the, uh, not doable and, um, very often. It was the world's first uh, foiling boat for weekend sailors. So you didn't have to be an athlete or, or a, you know, Superman to sail this boat and was quick away a couple of times. Uh, also, August 1st this year, we purchased a New Zealand company called Farrier Marine, a 35-year-old company with a two and a half year backlog of orders. And the intent was to, it still is, to do all the American orders in Edenton. Uh, previously, we were gonna be doing 70 orders immediately for US and Europe. But now with the 25% tariff on boats coming out of America into Europe, the 30 of those orders will stay in New Zealand until hopefully powers at Beacon see their way clear to help manufacturing in America along a little bit. So that, this is a, a bread and butter boat. In the, our, our 80 footer. Some aerial shots. Got a little video we can stream through there. And still the music. This was, uh, when we launched the boat, uh, this was one of the promo reels for it. <coughs> so, uh, just for, for your enjoyment there. Give you an idea of what we're really talking about. A lot of people here are powerboat people. We're doing, this boat's doing uh, 50 miles an hour in this shot. 30, wow. 33 knots is equivalent to 50 miles an hour on the road. No motors. <laughs> 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 the foils that are underneath that boat, we call our version 9 foils. We're up to version 23 today. Uh, we've also developed an uh, anti-capsize system and uh, another program called Stable Flight. So it's roll pitch your of the whole thing. Uh, and then the supersized version of that is, you have the book, is our 80 footer. And with that, we've also developed a new propulsion system, uh, which is hydrogen. So we, we're manufacturing hydrogen on board using solar, the regeneration power, when the boat's moving at such high speed, we have the ability to, to make a lot of electricity just through the turning of the prop because the boat's sailing so fast. So we, we're manufacturing hydrogen. We've had to develop a storage system for it. We did a partnership with uh, Andrew Coors from uh, Coors Family Trust, Coors Beer. And, and we just, uh, two months ago, got the certification for DNV GL, which is the the supreme being of engineering in all of maritime, ABS, which is American Bureau of Shipping, and DOT. So these tanks now will end up on, on the, um, the Nikola trucks, which are hydrogen trucks, which you will see coming. So uh, it's an exciting future. We're developing that all here and, and some more. So this is a little buffering guy on. If Europe and Australia and New Zealand, you some of your major market bases? Or? No, our major market is uh, Europe and US. That's that's my core, our core customers. So, 
just out of curiosity, I know I can't afford it. How much does that book cost? Uh, this, this little one, the 40 foot. It, you call that Lula? That's that little, yeah. Okay. The, well, the littlest one, the white one, it's uh -huh. 100,000. 100,000? Yeah, the okay. orange one is 1.5 million. Yeah. And the, the one we're having built now is 12.5 uh, million. Okay, thank you. It comes to two arm and five, right? That's the common chain. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, in, the, in the ancient days, we used to, you know, Noah chop the trees down and make a boat. And then a few thousand years later, people started using uh, steel or iron with rivets got steel welded and aluminium in the effort to get lighter. Uh, the lighter you make something, the less energy it needs to move. Uh, and then in 83, I was an apprentice at a company in Australia, and the guy came back from a meeting at NASA with a handful of graphite hairs. He said, my, my graphite, we can build boats out of this. And so luckily I was a second year apprentice at that time, and uh, worked with the Australian government laboratories called CSIRO, and we developed a way to weave that graphite fiber into carbon cloth. So it's uh, 50 to 60 times stronger than any of the material that was available before, and 26 times lighter than fiberglass. Hmm. So the strength, to, the strength to weight ratio is phenomenal. And it's the, one of the best materials on the planet. We were pitching Boeing in 1989, and the aircraft guys were like, you know, come to us in 20 years when you've sorted it all out, and it's all tested and proven, and as you see now, 35 years later, they're, everybody's building all the aircraft that they can from carbon fiber. Mike, are you the only company that you're building your boats with the um, hydrogen in mind we right are the, now? We are uh, the only manufacturer in the world right now with hydrogen propulsion as a standard product. And, and the reason I asked that question was I, I've been totally shocked. I, I mean, I, I read about boats all the time. Uh, yeah. I'm consumed with them. Um, I've been to practically all the boat shows in the United States. And um, John Stone and I were fairly good friends. So, yeah. um, But I was in Canada 10 years ago. And there was a company up there, and I cannot remember the name of it. It was a trucking company just like UPS. And they were using hydrogen up there, and you know, come in every night and charge them, and their exhaust pipe was no bigger than a, a water hose, you know. Yeah, but you're giving off oxygen and, and a little water vapor. I've always been totally shocked why somebody didn't do that in the boat business, so congratulations. I'm glad you're the first in the business, because I think you'll make a lot of money doing that. And in Eaton's in North Carolina. Yeah. Will yeah. you take us all for a ride out there? <laughs> I'll take you for a motor ride. Uh, unfortunately, our, our masts are too tall to go under the bridge, so we'll have to rig either in Wanchi's Norfolk uh, with, the, with the mast in. But here we'll be doing all of our uh, sea trials for systems and motoring on the sound here. What is that height? On these bridges, 60 feet? 65 is supposed to be the control height. Our, our DOT guys have gone right now, but. Uh, it's 65 to 71, depending on where you are. Mm -hmm. And your mask, I didn't get to read it. How tall are your mask? Uh, on, on this one, the next one coming out, we're uh, right at 130. So the, the little orange one, we have to take, the, we have to take the, the VHF antenna off the top of the mast to go under the bridge. You said uh, this material is lighter than fiberglass. Yes, sir. Uh, is it stronger? Stronger, 26 times stronger. Okay, I won't, I won't ask you what you said, but we all would like to go for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. If you, if you don't pull all of them up, you know. Yeah, no, you have, like I said, the, here the must won't be in, so no, no hard work. Just yeah, okay. we'll have some cocktails at the sunset. Council members, any further questions of Michael? I don't have a question, but I got a comment. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, this, this, this is sweet. I, I, yeah. I don't like to use that word, but it is a sweet ride, no doubt. And I'm, I'm sure it'll be very successful for you. And thank you for wanting to bring it to Eden, of all places. Yeah, and I'm also glad that we're able to uh, partner with you on this grant. Uh, Absolutely. 
Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, we, we're appreciative of, like the council members have said, of you being here, but we always encourage the people who are considering to come here that we will be your partner and we will work with you on any and every occasion that comes along that we can provide some assistance. And uh, happy to be part of this one and all the best. Thank you very much. Yeah. I just want to say, um, first person in my family to meet Michael was my daughter, Arabella, who loves to sail, and they had, they had quite a conversation. I represent him, so I probably shouldn't vote. I think it's probably safer if I don't. So I do their legal work, so I don't want to get in a conflict situation. I think you need to ask the council yeah. to... Um, to let me not vote, yeah. yeah. You need a motion on that, yeah. so Yeah, okay. I make a motion. Um, I'll say Okay, we've got a motion and a second to honor Councilman Dixon's request for recusal on this vote. Any further questions? All in favor, aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed, no? All right. I do support it. <laughs> Just like Steve. <laughs> glad, so glad he's here. Is that good a housekeeping done? Uh, Chair would entertain a motion that we adopt the resolution that we request. Second. Motion and a second. Further questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank Motion you. carried. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. I got to look into this and totally forgot we were doing the grant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Next item, please. Mayor? Yeah. You ready for me? I'm yeah. sorry. I was yeah. telling Michael and Hannah that they're welcome to stay, but they're free to leave. Oh, so, absolutely. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. yep. Good Thank, luck you. With Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Best of luck. Um, the next item under new business is our um, bid award, or your bid award, for the paving around the fuel farm. And in the uh, agenda review memo, I reported that there was one um, piece of information that needed to be vetted concerning Barnhill constructions or Barnhill pavings efforts to um, solicit minority subcontractors. And they had to submit their plan to the state, and that was reviewed. We thought it was going to take a lot longer, but we found out early yesterday morning that their plan um, was deemed acceptable. So you can go ahead and award this um, bid tonight. And the um, Barnhill was the low bidder, and the, um, we have a grant that will pay 100%, and the contract amount is $485,975. It's the same people that did our roads. Yes. Okay, Chair, would entertain a motion that we award the bid to Barnier. Mayor, being the liaison for y'all on the airport committee, I would certainly like to make that motion. Uh, yes, and sir. we would certainly like to make this happen as quick as possible, I can promise you. Second. Motion and a second to award the bid to Barnhill to pave our fuel farm area. Further questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed, no? All right, thank you very much. Capital Improvement Warrant System, please, ma'am. Mayor, I reported um, to you in the agenda review memo that the um, 2016 Capital Improvement Plan, if you update it and adopt it tonight, we will be able to score a few extra needed points on our application for the water system inventory and management asset program. So we have updated it um, for your review and consideration. The only numbers that we need to insert are the um, monthly maximum daily pumping records. I'm sorry, it's a mouthful. <laughs> Um, for a year 2017, 16, and 15. And we just have not had a chance to do that with all that we've got going on. But I just wanted you, and, I, and you saw in the draft where we had noted that those numbers needed to be updated. But everything else um, looks good, and I recommend that you adopt that, that plan for us. 
Okay. You heard the um, manager report. Anybody care to bring forth the motion? I so move. Second. Thank you. Motion and a second to update the water system, um, excuse me, capital improvement plan relative to the water system as presented. Questions or comments? <coughs> All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed, no? Thank you very much. Budget amendment. Mayor, we reported that, um, I think it was about 10 days ago, we discovered a large, large sinkhole in the um, parking area or the drive area behind the um, 300 block of South Broad Street. And um, Corey's team did some investigations and we discovered um, a previously unknown underground tank. And we immediately reached out to our environmental um, engineer and um, Corey debriefed with him and they um, put together a proposal um, to help us contract with a contractor who specializes in disposing of underground tanks. Um, so we have tonight before you a budget amendment because this was unanticipated. We didn't budget for the $25,000 that we hope it doesn't cost. Um, so Virginia um, made some reviews of the sales tax revenue items and made an adjustment to cover that expense which would be charged to um, the street department. And so that budget amendment is before you. And then also we have the contract um, to remove the underground tank as well. And the, um, our, the engineer has told us that they were estimating on the high side for removal of contaminated soil. We have not seen evidence of a fuel leak, but until the tank is totally removed, we're not sure. So um, hopefully we won't have to spend the, all the $25,000, but um, if there is a leak, we'll have funds available to. Where exactly is that? It's right behind 309. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got any idea who well, used it? We have not even had time to try to um, figure out what used oh, to be. That. We used yeah. to be back there, but yeah. Just curious. Okay, I uh, haven't heard the manager report on the underground tank removal. Chair would entertain a motion to approve the budget amendment. So move, Mayor. Thank you. Second. 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 <coughs> All right. Questions, comments? All in favor, aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed, no. All right, that motion carries. And number five. Fine. That will be the um, proposal for the um, engineer to assist us with the removal of the um, underground tank. Okay, Chair. Obtain a motion, entertain a motion to approve the contract. Second. Questions? All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. And that completes our uh, new business portion of the agenda. Council members, it's your turn <coughs> to bring forward any items considered timely and important other than Florence. I got something. I know uh, Anne Marie mentioned this in her report, but I got a copy of the magazine. Business North Carolina did. Uh, 22 young leaders making an impact across the, st the state and <clears throat> I'll read you this for those concerned about the fate of rural parts of North Carolina our inaugural trailblazers feature provides some of the some hopeful signs the section recognizes young thriving business owners and professionals who operate in North Carolina's smaller cities and towns um, and one of the 22 is our own Jennifer Harris. Great picture of Jennifer. And it says that North Carolina's second oldest town has a thriving center of city, uh, in part due to the leadership of Harris, executive director of the nonprofit uh, booster organization, Destination Downtown. So I'll pass that just around for y'all to see if you haven't seen a copy of it. But, you know, I think it's great for us to, number yes. one, have young people here, and number two, have them thriving. So. It does crack. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up, Sambo. I, I'm real proud of her for that. Yes. Uh, she does a wonderful job as evidenced by what we have out here and the favorable comments we receive.
seat um, relative to our downtown. So thankfully, she's our leader. Could we put that on our website somehow? We, we've shared there? it with Sage okay. on, on social media. Okay. And, um, but we'll re retweet it. Yeah, I just think it's great. Anybody else have anything? Progress on the fine fire chief? Department director. We um, have narrowed the pool of candidates for the fire fire chief's position and expect to start interviews soon. Um, have not received, um, I've only received two applications for the electric, so I'm going to propose um, that we consider or that you consider hiring a recruiter to help me fill that position. But we'll get some proposals for you to look at. Else? I've got one item. I, I wanted to. I, I took a few notes uh, in this meeting that the mayor and I went to the other night to uh, be a part of the solution. Uh, it was a town hall meeting uh, that was addressing substance uh, abuse, um, namely opioids, of course. Uh, but just real quick, that this this is what really hit home to me because. I've had a very good friend of mine whose son overdosed, and um, some of these numbers I, I just could hardly believe that they're in, in North Carolina alone, uh, there are four people who die every day, and in the nation there's 115 people who die every day from opioids uh, overdose. In Chowan County, this number shocked me to no end. Forty. Uh, 4,457 visits to the local hospital within the last year. That was from May 1st of 2017 to April 30th of 2018. So this is current, current numbers. At a total cost of $19,940,000. And they were, they were alcohol and alcohol substance and abuse, substance abuse but related. Um, it was a it was a very very good program. Um, I got to thank uh, Julie Perry so much for putting this together, and uh, she had a really good group of people that she's been working with. But uh, if you know you, you missed a treat the other night, I know everybody's busy and you can't get to everything, but uh, it, it really was nice to have that that town hall meeting and, and different people from different segments were, were able to tell us what's going on in, in that world. And they had one young lady from Elizabeth City who gave a testimonial uh, that was where she had, had fallen on hard times with drugs for a long time. She talked about smoking pot with her mother. That's how, how far back she went when she was a teenager. And had been clean now for right at two years, I think, one year and eight months and 13 days or something, she laid it out. But uh, it, it was really good, very interesting, but That's very sad good. numbers. Yeah. I'm glad you shared that. I was going to do it if you didn't. And one thing uh, about the young lady who gave the testimonial, one of the comments she made really struck me as well, and that was she said during that time when she was so addicted, she had no feelings. She was, neither, she was neither sad, she was neither happy, she was neither up, she was neither down, she was just wherever uh, her substance took her. And that's one of the things that she was appreciating most now as a sober person, was to be able to feel joy, sorrow, all the other emotions that, that, that we are as human beings uh, capable of uh, feeling, depending on circumstances and, and other uh, influencing factors. It was uh, it was a very moving um, evening, and um, thanks for sharing that, Steve. Anybody else have a comment? Mayor, do you mind if I just take this opportunity to give a quick update Not on our preparedness for the hurricane, and we'll get it uh, uploaded on YouTube early tomorrow and to MediaCom, so the public is available. But. Um, we are under a hurricane watch and under a storm surge watch. Um, up until noontime, the estimate, uh, the prediction for the storm surge was five to seven feet. 
Um, I believe it is has been lowered slightly, but I've not received official notification yet. But even if it's a three to five foot surge, that's still um, a serious situation for us. Uh, we went ahead on Saturday and rented two bypass pumps for the main sewer lift station. Corey was able to secure those on Saturday. We were one of the last uh, pumps to be spoken for. And then we also secured, thanks to Corey and Brad's efforts, a um, mobile pump, backup pump for the East Water Storm Sewer Station. Now that will not help with the storm surge. That will be deployed after the surge goes away and help us if we need it, if something were to happen to the um, existing pump, that would help with the rainwater, storm water that's trying to drain away. We've been working on, Public Works has been working on sandbags. We're going to sandbag some of our facilities here. Remember, this building flooded during Isabel, so we'll sandbag the back door. We'll work on the bathrooms. We'll do some things to try and protect the Conger building and, of course, the main lift station as well. Um, we had a, true, a tree trimming contractor in town for the last couple of weeks. We held on to them. Um, they're they're going to stay with us this week. And with um, a lot of hard work between Public Works and the Electric Department, this tree trimming contractor was able to take down a hazardous tree that had been approved for removal on North Broad Street. And that took just about all day to come down, but we're glad it's down. We've reached out to electrical contractors and are on um, waiting list. Electricities has been in touch with us, and they have said that there are electric, municipal electric crews coming from all over the country, that help is on the way. We were able to secure, uh, I think we have about 30 hotel rooms for our workers um, for starting Saturday night, um, so we'll have a place for them to stay. All the departments have been gearing up with food and supplies and water. Um, we're going to collect recyclings tomorrow, but there's going to be no yard waste collection on Thursday or Friday. We thought it would be too hazardous. Plus, we need our sanitation um, crews deployed helping maintain um, and clear storm drains. We, um, the county was able to secure um, the convenience center to be open tomorrow. Normally they're closed on Wednesdays, but it will be open, so we're pushing the word to residents whose trash on the west side is picked up on the west side, go ahead and get rid of your trash tomorrow at the convenience site. Um, the National Guard has fulfilled our request, or the county's request, for three high water rescue vehicles. Um, with e Each vehicle will come with four guardsmen. And our fire department has agreed to house them for uh, one unit will stay with Edenton Fire Department, one will stay at the rescue squad, and then the other will stay up at Crossroads. Um, there's a lot of other things that the county has done, um, but I'll, I'll just kind of wrap it up here. They, um, the schools are closed tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. Um, and that really was done to help allow for the shelter to be activated. So the county is going to open a shelter tomorrow. Um, it's going to open at 6 p.m. And that late start really has to do with the time that it will take for the Red Cross to come because they're in charge of the shelters. But we're spreading the word. Um, people can go on the town Facebook page, the county Facebook page, social media, um, with the bulletins that we are issuing periodically updating people. So, um, And then lastly, Elizabeth helped us um, with a storm surge map, that terrific tool that I sent to you last night where you can, it's interactive, it's the state's um, map, you can plug in what an estimated feet of storm surge is and it will actually show you where the surge, what properties would be impacted at different levels. So we produced um, a notice to residents who were in the area of that five to seven foot storm surge. And we um, actually divided it up into about five different neighborhoods and the police chief and his um, officers are going to door to door to those houses just to make sure. We think people know, but you know, if you're new and you're not, you've not lived through something like this, 
we want to make sure people are aware. So I really appreciate that um, personal touch, Chief, from the police department helping our residents to, to know and to, and to be prepared. Um, the EOC will be activated on Thursday, and that's where I'll be spending most of my time. And um, if you need me, call me, text me, and I will do my best to keep you updated of any significant events that, that happen. Oh, and I did want to say, um, we submitted a grant application last week to Golden Leaf Foundation to fund the purchase of a permanent bypass at the main lift and a second pump, permanent pump at East Water Street. And they called last week and wanted to come to a site visit and meet with us, and I took that to be a very good sign. And that was scheduled for tomorrow, and they called yesterday, uh, they called me today and said, can we still come because we really want to vet these projects so that we can get some, uh, hopefully some approvals. I said, absolutely. Uh, and hopefully they're going to be able to see the temporary pumps, you know, that, that we've, we've ordered. And they'll, they'll really get a feel for um, what we're dealing with. So, But um, thanks for all the support. And um, we'll continue to monitor and, and prepare. Thank you for the update. Very good. Um, anyone else have anything? I'll open the floor for public comment. Anybody would like to address the town council, please come to the podium and state your name. We'd be happy to hear from you. Um, Joe Liotta, 116 West Gale. First question is um, what Anna Marie just uh, mentioned. Is the council recommending that we evacuate for the storm or no? Do you want me to I'm asking because it's my first time riding out of storm. Sure, yeah. okay. So. Mayor, is it okay if I respond? Sure. The um, evacuate in North Carolina, evacuations are a decision that are made by the county board of commissioners. Um, we're fortunate because we have a very good relationship with the county and we're part of the control group. But um, in um, the, our county, this morning on a conference call with um, the governor, with all the counties that are affected by the hurricane, reserved the right for them to de decide if there's going to be an evacuation. Um, some of the other states, their laws are different. I believe South Carolina and Virginia, the governor can order evacuations. So that's kind of the process. Um, we have been taught every meeting that the control group meets. We talk about evacuations, and we are um, we are not recommending evacuations. I mean, people ha can we're not ordering evacuations. People need to make the decisions as to whether or not they feel safe. What is their level of tolerance? Um, the fact that the shelters are open, we're telling people, look, if you if you need a safe place to stay, go to the shelters. Yeah, I was, I was asking, I mean, you all are Edentonians, and you know how the town manages through it, so as a two-year uh, resident. Another FYI, we have issued a state of emergency, and that's for the purpose of opening up uh, avenues to access funding post-storm if we need it. So that, that is in place. And the only other thing that, that could happen other than a county ordered evacuation would would be a curfew and that depends upon what condition the town is in uh, post storm as well if we're without power and we're going to be projected to be without power for an extended period of time uh, in the past we have uh, placed a curfew uh, so that people won't be out and about in the dark so uh, other than that, I think we're in a good spot. Well, that's, that's good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. And one other quick question. Um, listening to the, the bike presentation, um, coming from a big city, I appreciate uh, the, the Going Green initiative and where cities have a lot of traffic and want to get rid of emissions. I think it's really good. I think in smaller towns like Edenton, it's a solution looking for a problem. And several of you raised some issues with it, from parking to inconvenience to residents on Broad Streets in terms of, tur of turning and having to meander around. Um, 
and also in terms of the funding, it sounded like we'd be on the hook right away if we agreed with them. And I know, like emergency situations coming up, there are other things we can do with the money. Um, so, just a quick quick opinion based on this is uh, not sure. I think we need a lot more to look into before we sign on the dotted line and are on the hook for any money for this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to address the council this evening? Okay, seeing uh, no one, I will close the public comment portion of the meeting and entertain a motion to adjourn. So much a move. All right. All in favor, aye. 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 Our meeting is adjourned. <coughs>